So good morning uh, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Um, welcome to our, the We Connect Academy live seminar, Personal Branding for Influential Women Leaders, The Tenant Impactful, which is uh, going to be presented to you by Ana Guevara. Ana is the president of Aventi Associates. She has a lot of experience and a lot of things related to entrepreneurship and women's entrepreneurship, global trade and commerce, um, and she was the executive director of the WeConnect International um, Project in Colombia, um, and she launched our project there. So I am thrilled to introduce you to Anna. You're going to learn a lot more about her in the course of this webinar. So right now, I'm going to turn it over to her. Go ahead, Anna. Thank you, Liz, and good morning or good evening to everybody who's on uh, the call. Thank you for joining us. We have a lot to cover, so um, it's going to be as interactive as we can make it uh, through this webinar. And uh, so we'll be asking you some questions. If you can go ahead and just throw in whatever your thoughts are uh, through the webinar system here, and I think we'll, we'll just get moving. Um, I guess the first thing I wanted to do was talk about what we'll cover today because the personal branding is a very broad topic. So one of the things that we'll be exploring is, is what does that really mean today? And why is it essential for you as a business owner to take control of your personal brand? And uh, why that is important for you, not only for your business, but as a leader in your community. We'll also be introducing you to the 10 impactful tools that you can incorporate in your everyday activities that will help make you stand out. So we have a short time, so out of those 10 impactful, we're going to be focusing on three that are essential. And hopefully we'll be having more seminar, webinars during the year and we can cover some of the other ones or the ones that we covered today more in depth. We'll uh, also be helping you to discover how you are perceived, uh, help you define what you would like to be known for, and make a plan to create the personal brand that you seek. Your success depends on your personal brand, and I think for that reason, it's important for us to define what is personal brand. Many of us, when we think of personal brand, we think of typical brandy things, what do I look like on Twitter, on Google, on LinkedIn, and all of those things are very, very important. But at the same time, there's a lot that goes before even getting on the social media and on the Google page. And those are some of the essentials that we'll be talking about. We'll come back to this, what I call googly doc, later on in, in the um, in the webinar. So let's start out first. I'm going to throw this out as a question to the people who are online. What do you think is personal branding? And let's see if we can get a couple ideas from some of the people that are listening to us today. Just go ahead. There are no wrong answers. Just go ahead and throw them out. Okay, so uh, we're Seeing some, a lot of, some people think personal branding is uh, for um, uh, uh, what you look like on the Internet, and that is certainly one thing. Uh, what are some other ones? Reputation, um, Rachel Kremer said. Mamuna Williams said the way you are perceived. Um, and Jane Piper said the way you are perceived in the market as an expert on a topic. Those are all really great, great, you, this is a great team because you're right, it's how people feel about your identity. It's how they feel about you. So it's not necessarily what you want to be, it is what other people say that you are. And that is an important thing to keep in mind uh, for that. Also, I want to point out that everybody on this webinar has a personal brand. Now, the fact that you've actually been able to start a business and be successful in your business means you have a good personal brand. So up to this point, you've been maybe doing it 
uh, deliberately. Maybe you've been, it's just been happening kind of on its own. But one of the things that we need to think about looking forward as we grow our businesses and as we grow our impact on the communities that we serve is do you want to take control of your personal brand to take it to the next level or are you going to let other people define yours? Because remember, it's how other people see us. So in this webinar, we're going to talk about using some of my personal experiences and experiences from other people that I've worked with. And we're going to start out with, yes, that's me as a little girl in Colombia where I was born. And so the question is, how did a little girl from the mountains in Colombia one day get a call from the White House with the, the question, with the statement, the President wants you to represent the United States at the World Bank. And that's what we're going to talk about is how you can get such a specific brand that what you want to do, people come to you to ask you for your services and for your help because of the way that you've defined myself, your stuff. And so here we'll, um, as uh, we look at the 10 impactful, we're going to be focusing on three of the 10 impactful. One is uh, what I call find true north. Two is be consistent. And then we're going to jump to number nine, manifest your standing ovation. Now, I know there's a lot of there in between, but I take these, I think they're the three essential ones for us to get started on. And then as we move forward to other webinars, we can expand on, on the others. So let's uh, go with the first one, find true north. We go back to the last picture that I had showed you with the call from the President of the United States asking if I would represent him at the World Bank. Well, how did that come about? One of the things that my first thought was, I don't know anything about banking, and I really thought that they had made a mistake calling me for that job. But how do you say no to the President of the United States? And so I kept trying to get out of it. And finally, from the White House, the uh, White House personnel manager said to me, well, no, it's not that you uh, are a good candidate. It is that you are the candidate that the President wants in this position. And I asked a bit more. And the reason was because a lot of the work that I had done, I had showed that I could build coalitions and I showed that I could bring people together to come together for a common cause. And at the time, that what was needed at the World Bank. I was told we got lots of experts that know about all the financial aspects and you will be supported in this. But what we need right now is someone that uh, can uh, build coalitions and bring people together. And so there I went. It required that I have a Senate confirmation uh, in order to take that position. And this is another way that you can set what your um, personal brand is. In my testimony to the Senate, I pointed out that my thing that I was going to focus on was on how countries that were developing could benefit from trade and have trade be more inclusive and more sustainable in order to create prosperity uh, across for more people in the private sector. So there's different ways that you can develop your brand. Through the years, uh, doing it as a um, how you position yourself, and there's also a way to develop your brand when you get an opportunity to state something very publicly. So if we go back to this, this is another example. You want to couple your identity, who you are, with the expertise that you have. And the important thing is to bring in the value that you build. And we'll be talking about that a little bit. So as you see here in this um, one of the latest um, events that I spoke at, at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. And the, uh, the subject here is doing business uh, report from the World Bank. 
So I continues with this with the theme of trade and development, and that's uh, how I get asked to speak at this event. Now this picture is is a little bit different, but there I am with a, a hard hat that says the tool lady in China, and I this was when I worked with UPS and. Um, we traveled around the world, uh, aside from our regular jobs, building schools in different countries. And this one was in, in China. What happened at the first meeting was that all the boys, you can see them in the background, they knew how to hammer, they knew how to saw, they knew how to build a house. But I didn't have any of those skills. So the first a couple hours, I just sat around doing nothing. So, but I started picking up the tools, arranging the tools, and I'm a very organized person, and, and I can be, you know, put people in their place when they don't return the tools. So, eventually I became the tool lady, and they made a hat for me, and I became indispensable uh, to making these programs work. It's a little bit of a, a, a different example. But you can build your quote unquote personal brand not only for your main business but also for particular situations that you're at. Whether it's a board that you're on or a committee or an organization, you can also find that special thing, what makes you different and specialize it and then you build your value that way. What we're going to do now is a little exercise. And we're going to talk about um, discover how you are perceived. We're going to start it now in the webinar, but this is something that uh, I would ask that over the next month that you take some time to do a little bit further. I'd like to ask uh, the folks now uh, to think of five words that come directly to your mind that describe how you think people see you. And I'm going to throw it open, Liz, if you can help us with some of those answers. Just five words of how you think people see you. Um, since we have a lot of people on, maybe you can just send one word for the ones that want to send in a word. Okay. Expert is one word we got. Those Radiant. are good. Professional. Radiant? Yes. Radiant. It's a good one. Organized. Direct. So, uh, direct. Good. Connector. Honest. Trustworthy. Knowledgeable. Pragmatic. I think that's, that's a good group. That, that, those are excellent, um, excellent uh, words, top of mind. And so I think that um, uh, when you can later go back and write five for yourself, and as you're writing the five words, all of those are good, I'd like you to also think of um, how you might be able to think of words like the ones that you said, but also think of words of, why you are different from other people in that sense. So as you write them down, uh, you're pragmatic. But in your mind, think how that makes you more pragmatic or different from other people. How does your pragmatism make you different? How does it make you stand out in the way that you do that? And that is something to think about. The second thing, once you get your five words together, is to go around and ask your colleagues, your friends, and your family the same thing. Ask them to say five words about how they see you. And then look through your list and their list and see if there are any common uh, things or if they're all completely different. How do they compare? Do, are other people seeing you the way that you think they're seeing you? This is important because then you can go back and, and, and think, okay, maybe they're seeing things that you didn't even think about yourself that are really great. Or maybe 
they're getting an impression uh, of you and it's not exactly what you thought. So it can be a very great exercise. It can also be an exercise that, um, you know, can make you scratch your head a, a little bit. But please, you know, that's something that you should try um, to do. And as you're doing it and thinking of your words, start thinking of what are other words that you could use to make yourself different from other people? What are words that you would want to have uh, said about you that are words that show that you are having an impact and that you can see things that others cannot? How can you stand out? So with that, the second exercise that we can start right now, but I'd like to um, then for you to go back and work on a little bit later is to define what you would like to be known for. And when I'm saying you would like to be known for, I'm really talking about you, your executive personal branding, not your business's personal branding. Although in some cases they can be very similar or the same, particularly if you're in a service, if you're providing a service through your business. But, um, write down a sentence that describes what would be the best you that you could be. If you could be known for anything in the world, if you could do anything and you wanted people to know you as anything, what would that be? And go ahead and you can write in some answers. And while you're writing in, I just wanted uh, you to think about um, and a little bit further than I want to be uh, a writer. It should be more like what, what kind of writer? And a writer that changes people's lives. Um, I want to um, be the best event coordinator. Uh, for what purpose? What, is, what would make you the best? I want to be the best event coordinator so that um, I can reach thousands of people on a particular subject or whatever it is that describes you. I want to be um, uh, an excellent mentor so that I can change the lives of young people. So write the sentence that best describes you. Do we have any um, answers, Liz? Um, one person says, I want to be a great blogger who simplifies tech for common people. Ooh. Um, yeah. Another one says, I want to be known as an expert for improving workplaces and organizations so there are better places nice. for people to work. Nice. So um, let me take those, those two because those are really good examples. And if, uh, when you go back and you write your own sentence, like the one that, um, can you read the second one again, Liz? Um, known as an expert for improving workplaces and organizations so they are better places for people to work. Excellent. So when you, when you go back and, and write that sentence again, what is going to make you different? You want to be known for that. But what is the one thing that is going to make you different to be known for that? And so when you go and you write your sentence, uh, think about what is the value? What is the one thing that you are going to do that is going to be different from everyone else that is going to make you stand out? And so if you uh, write your sentence first and then go back and try to think of, uh, as we looked in this slide, how to differentiate yourself how to have that impact and, and stand out. So um, the other thing to look at when uh, you're writing your sentence is what is the promise that you are selling? So the last sentence that we had is good. You put w what you were promising someone, what you were selling. And again, how does this define the value that you bring? So those are two things. And when I say promise you are selling, it's not that you're selling a, pro, uh, a product. What you're doing is selling yourself. So uh, um, we go on to um, 
the second impactful, which is called Be Consistent. We have a very cute little pink elephant there, and um, the reason he's there is for this. In the United States, we have a saying that when there is an elephant in the room, that there is some topic, something that people know is there, but they don't want to mention it. And so this elephant is because there's always something related uh, to personal branding and the way we are when we're women. Sometimes we don't like to talk about it, but yes, there are some things as women that we have additional challenges to in this area um, to be consistent. And the reason is this, as women, sometimes we tend to want to please everybody. We want everybody to like us, and so we can get ourselves into some trouble. One of the challenges is that we can meet with one person and ask us to do one thing, and they say, don't you think this, and we say, yes, yes, and then we go to another person, and they ask us something, and it's kind of the same, and we don't want to hurt their feelings, so we say yes. And this can get us into trouble. But one of the most important things about our brand, our personal brand, is that people see us as being consistent. When what, what we say in one venue is the same thing that we say in another venue. And this takes a little bit of, uh, of practice. You, you never want to be caught in, you know, people saying, well, she said that to me or, or you know, um, that's it's not really reliable. It's a thing that just takes practice like, like anything because, again, we as, you know, don't want to say, but the, but the elephant in the room is that there are differences um, between us and, and men, and this is a, uh, just one thing that I suggest that we be careful with it. And related to that, uh, with being consistent is having honest feelings. And they're related because if, if you're consistent, you can, you can have honest feelings with everybody. And uh, one of my, well, I can't say he was my boss because he passed away before I worked for UPS, but he was the founder of UPS. He was a great man with a great philosophy, and he used to say that uh, one measure of your success will be the degree to which you build up others who work with you. While building up others, you will build up yourself. And this is something important to think of our personal brand, because our personal brand is not just what we do uh, for ourselves or directly, but our personal brand is also measured how the people that we work with, uh, how, how, they, how they are seen and how they view us. And so this is an important thing to, to keep in mind. It's not your personal brand. is not something you can just create and put on the website or put on LinkedIn. It, your personal brand is, is created and should have a life of its own. One of the little, little beads that we're talking about is um, with the people that you work with, there are little things that you can do uh, every day that can have a lasting impression. Here's an example of at one time when uh, I was actually quite young. I don't know how I got involved in this, but I became one of the uh, lead negotiators for the uh, U.S.-Mexico-Canada Free Trade Agreement, known as NAFTA, on Mexico trucking. And I was interviewed by the Journal of Commerce and this is just an example here. You can see my boss there, Arnie, he wrote a note that took the time to write a note and said, that's great, you know, and he really encouraged me. This was in 1991, I think, and you see that I still keep it. That's, you know, how much it meant to me. I learned a lot from uh, the Arnies. I had two bosses named Arnie who really impacted me, and uh, when I got you know, to my other jobs, I also started writing little notes to people. The other day I ran into someone when I was at the U.S. Department of Commerce as Deputy Assistant Secretary um, for Trade, 
and one of uh, my the people that worked for me said to me, you know, Anna, we did a lot of great things while you were here, but the one thing I remember and that I still keep pinned up on my desk is the little notes that you wrote me every time we did something good. So people remember the, um, the, the, the things that you do and all these little deeds, it's very important. The next thing under be consistent is never get between the dog and the fire hydrant. As you can see from the picture here, uh, what the dog is doing, you really don't want to be between that dog and the fire hydrant. Sometimes we get there. And this goes a little bit back to my initial comment, which sometimes we try to please everybody. And as we try to please somebody, we should get in a bad position between people. So really, we, we need to avoid uh, being there. And if you're ever thinking, you know, should I do this or should I not do this, or I, uh, I need to tell this person no, but I, I'm going to make up a story on tell, how to tell them no because I don't want to hurt their feelings, but then maybe later they find out from someone else that you're doing something else. So that if you have honest feelings and try to be consistent with everybody, you can avoid getting here between the dog and the fire hydrant. It's a funny thing, but you can ask yourself, if you have to think about something twice, should I do this? Then ask yourself, am I getting between the dog and the fire hydrant? It's kind of a funny thing. But um, the other uh, thing is staying in with the out. In the U.S., we have a thing that if, if, if a husband has been bad at home, the wife will send them to sleep in the dog house outside where the dog sleeps. So that's why I have this picture here. And it's important, you know, uh, the people that we work with, sometimes they have good moments, sometimes they have bad moments. It's important to be consistent with people, and unless someone has done something illegal or immoral, that you, you maintain the friendship with them. And I can give the example here of one time when I was going through uh, my uh, Senate confirmation, and um, for political reasons that were not related to me, there, there was uh, a little bit of a holdup. And one of the congressmen who I had stuck with at a point where he was down, he later came back up, but he said to me, you know, Anna, I remember what you, that you stayed by me and what you did for me when I was down and other people left me, and that uh, senator was uh, pivotal in helping me get through my Senate confirmation. So it's something that you, you need to remember. It's easy to forget the people who, who are down, but it, it builds your brand. Again, so I go back to people remember your acts, not your accomplishments. Well, you can see a picture of me here on the very little one on the right-hand side by uh, the coach here. This is crew. And we had a great team, but starting out was a bit of a challenge for all of us. Uh, we were all new, including the coach. But we had a great season, and we were at the semifinals. And um, the father of one of the rowers went to the coach and, and – um, the uh, the father said to the coach, oh, I, I, I know who you are. You're the one that made my little girl cry. And so the thing that was remembered was not that we had gone to the semifinals and we had a good, and we had a really good run. What was remembered was the way that uh, the coach acted. But we all learned that he became one of the most fabulous coaches that we ever had. He's a living legend now. But everybody goes through um, uh, learning periods, and I think that's important as, as we um, go through. Uh, as we move along, we're going to skip to the number nine of the 10 impact, impactful, which is talking about how to manifest your standing ovation. So um, I don't know how well everybody is uh, knows the English language who's on the call, but a standing ovation is when you are at a show, and at the end of the show, the show is so good that everybody stands up and claps. 
Uh, and so that's a standing ovation. So what we're going to talk about is how you can create your own standing ovation for the things that you do. And we're going to go through three things. One, what I call googly docs. The second one is profit in her own country. And the third one, swing maniacs, mentors, and sponsors as we move forward. Here we go back to this page, the googly docs. So it, it is important at some point, you know, to, to see Google yourself. And maybe, Liz, you can find out from the folks there uh, how many have actually Googled themselves in the past. And while I can, we can get some of those answers while I continue going forward. It can be overwhelming now. There's so much social media and that you will need to actually make a plan, otherwise it can, it can totally engulf you and take over uh, your life. Uh, and you, that's all you will be doing. But to really be effective in this area, you, you need to continue to add content and have things that are worth talking about and reporting. Um, and so, um, uh, and, and I use me as an example. In the last few years, I had particularly some um, uh, personal challenges uh, with illnesses and other things in my family, and I did not keep up this as much as uh, I should have. Or in the past, it, ha it seemed to happen by itself. Last year, when I was preparing for my first web, uh, first seminar and workshop, on personal branding, I wanted to use as an example uh, how great my Google doc was because if you Googled me, you had pages and pages and pages with links to things that I had done. But since I had kind of gone out of uh, the limelight for a few years while I had to take care of some other things, uh, personal business, I went to Google myself and I wanted to show that as an example of good Googly got. And I found that I was had basically almost disappeared in the last two years while I was focused on other things. So the lesson is that things happen, they change really quickly, you need to continually add to to it. Liz, do we have any folks uh, who have been Googling themselves or involved in, or done any of the social media? We do. Um, I've gotten several, most people are saying yes, they have. Um, one person said that they Googled yesterday to check if uh, their new website appeared, but didn't really know what to look for. So I thought that was an interesting point. But those are great points. And actually, um, there's a, um, a webinar that we can do on those kind of things uh, later, which is, you know, how to get the most um, to get your website and the things that you post to come up uh, on top, have priority, and how to have your your LinkedIn and your Twitter and to um, to make it the most effective with you know little tricks like about 80% of what you should put in should be thought leadership, and really only about 20% actually selling what what you want to sell. But um, going back to the um, to the person's question, um, I want to highlight that there's really two different things. You Google your website for your company's name, I assume, um, and what you also want to look at is not just your company, but what you want to look at is your own personal branding. So whatever your your name is, um, uh, uh, to be able to look up that name, for you as, as a person, as your reputation, what do you stand for? What are the things that you advocate? What are the, uh, the organizations that you're um, related to? When people think about you, what, do they, what topics do they think about you? So it's, not, so it's a bit different from your company branding when we're talking about the personal branding. But again, it can, they can be related, but they are separate. And so what are some of those things that you can do? Because um, in order to get to the point where you can have 
things um, on YouTube that you can have your name pop up, links and, and things to put on, on the LinkedIn, you need to create content for it. Uh, and you need to show that you are doing things. One thing is to get invited to speak or to moderate um, uh, on topics that you are saying that you know about. So like for instance here, I am, this was in China, and I was uh, the keynote speaker there on, um, on trade and logistics with, with China. Another example might be here, you might give um, you might volunteer your time or, uh, or even, you know, create webinar series of your own on things that uh, you, you know about and get these things. This one was in Africa uh, just this fall that we did. So another thing is putting on events for yourself. Here we see uh, another thing which is writing articles or opinion pieces in newspapers. Here's one that I wrote that got published in the Miami Herald. And uh, another one is doing interviews uh, live on radio or on TV uh, for different things that you interact. Now all of those, those things that we just looked at are things that you are doing to promote yourself. But they're really, as there's a saying that I say, a prophet in her own country gets no respect. And what I mean by that is that we can talk about how great we are all the time, but it's always better if a third party, someone else talks good about us and can tell about what we're doing because it makes it more believable. And then when people uh, Google us or if we post things on our sites, it's not just us saying things, it's third party saying things. So for example, if we look at this article that I'm doing now, this was in Brazil. And uh, as you can see, it got a, it got a good write-up there from when I was with the Department of Commerce. Even at the top, at the very top of the newspaper, they had a picture of me, which I thought was very funny since I, I hadn't even brushed my hair well that day. <laughs> Another thing, um, <clears throat> other ways that you can get your, your name out is if you have a new position uh, to, to get out your name. Now you notice on these things, that I'm showing you, it's about my personal branding. It's not about necessarily the branding of uh, the company or organization that I'm working uh, on. Another way to get out something is if you publish something or if you get out a new product or a new service, have someone write about it. Have it be a third party that write it. Sometimes you'll get something crazy like this. For the ladies that are here from Latin America on the webinar with us, you know Rani Dallas. It's like a, a women's magazine that's sold uh, all over Latin America. And one day they did a, a full page uh, <clears throat> talking about the work that I was doing and, um, and about me. And I know my grandmother got a big kick out of this when she saw, saw I come out. The, um, other thing is that we need to help uh, each other get uh, promoted uh, or get recognition in other facts. So here we have, this was a negotiation for a treaty with China that I um, was leading the negotiations on. Just by way of culture, I don't know if we have anyone from China here with us, but the negotiations uh, in, the, in the Western world, we sit around the table and we negotiate around the table. In China here, the formal way of negotiating is to have seats side by side and you do it uh, that way. So um, it was a, an interesting experience, but the reason I bring this up is because at the end, I nominated my team for an award and um, and then when I did that, my boss decided I deserved to get the award too. So we all ended up getting the Silver Medal Award. And those are things that are good to, um, to then be able to publish, put out press releases. You can um, latch them on to your personal branding so that you can be known for that one special thing that, that you do. The other thing I had on there was um, 
wing maniacs, mentors, and sponsors. And what I mean by wing maniacs, um, there's a, a, in the United States when when um, the boys go to the bar and they want to you know meet women, they'll have what they call a wingman, and it's it's the guy who kind of goes and introduce, talks good about the other guy so that the woman will come over uh, and visit him. But so I think, you know, as women, we, we need to be wingmen too. We need to be wing maniacs. We need to be maniacs about being wing women, uh, wingmen. And what I mean by that is uh, pick people that you know. If you're going to a reception, pick a friend or a colleague that you're going with and and the both of you decide that you will be talking about the other person to people you meet. So for example, instead of me going up to someone and telling them how great I am and everything that I've done, I will be talking to someone and I'll say, did you meet Sally? Oh my God, you should hear what she did. She just did this, she just did that. Let me introduce you. And then it's a much better way for that person to learn about Sally than for Sally just to have to talk herself up. So when you do events, when you do things, you know, find your wingman that you can, uh, that you will both help to promote each other. Another example of that is what I have up on the page here. The Organization of Women in International Trade. Each year has, uh, nominates women to get uh, awards. Uh, women Entrepreneur Award for the year. So in here, I just did this uh, a week ago. I nominated Gladys Mitzrahi, um, who um, is uh, part of the We Connect um, system in Colombia as well. She's in Miami. And I'm nominated for all her good work that she had done to help women in international trade. And she just got a call yesterday that she uh, has been selected to be the winner this year. But it would have been very difficult for her to nominate herself. And you can't be afraid to ask people this because actually Gladys called me about a week and a half ago and said, Anna, I really want to be nominated for this. Can you help me? And I had no hesitation to help her because I think she's absolutely wonderful. But if she had not asked me, I would not have thought about doing it. So it's, um, you have to not be shy to ask your friends and your colleagues and support each other to do that. So uh, as we're closing, what I want to talk about is what steps that you can take next to help manifest your personal brand. And hopefully we'll be having some more webinars and, and we can delve in deeper into some of these things. But for the next um, hour, uh, month or so, I'd like you to take a look at um, what three steps you can take in the next month to begin manifesting and creating your personal brand. And we're going to open this up again for comments here. And I think one of the first steps that you can take is to define your offer and your value of what you will, uh, of what you want uh, to be. And um, the uh, next one after that is to set very specific goals and objectives and then choose your campaign type. And what I mean by campaign type is that our, because it can be overwhelming, just focus on one thing. You're going to start getting that out either because you're going to write something or because you're um, going to nominate, uh, you're going to ask someone to nominate you for something, or you plan to go to a big conference and you're going to find your wingman to help you along with that. I'd like to throw it out now, Liz, to the people on the call to see if they can th send us some ideas of things that they will be doing in the next month to help uh, begin creating or bringing their personal brand, taking control of their personal brand to the next level. While we're waiting for those answers, I just want to um, point out that, you know, uh, we're not changing the essence of who we are. Sometimes, you know, I hear, well, I am who I am. I don't want to change who I am. 
but we need to think and in, in mind everything that we do that we do well takes practice. If, if you play tennis, you have to practice a lot to be a really good tennis player. If you're a painter, you have to paint a lot to be a good painter. And it's the same thing of what we're talking about. Everything uh, are things that maybe we do already, we do well, but if we really focus on doing them, we can do it in a more consistent manner and we can really excel and do them well. So all we're talking about is using our energy and not work in a more efficient and focused way. And uh, Liz, do we have any, any comments then? I don't have any comments in now. I think people are just absorbing what they want to do in the next month or so. Okay. Well, don't be shy. There's no right or wrong answers. You can just throw in whatever you, whatever you want to be. It could simply be that in the next month you're going to um, talk to uh, your family to get the results of, of, of how they see you. It can be anything. There are no wrong or right answers. <clears throat> and oh, one, um, one woman yes. one woman said she's going to update her profile on LinkedIn. That's good. So I think that's a, that's excellent. So as you're updating your profile on LinkedIn, it'll be very important to think about what do you want to be known as and what is the value that you will be bringing to people um, on that. And if you already Googled yourself and you on LinkedIn can put any links to articles you have written or events you're speaking at, those are all really good things um, to put on there. Anything else? Oh, really? Yeah. Um, one woman said, be more focused as I have so many interests, but I'll be certainly doing the wing woman thing, which I think <laughs> is great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another person said they're going to update their LinkedIn pro profile, and one woman said she's going to work on her blog. Great. Those are all excellent things. And, uh, and again, as you're looking at those things, differentiate yourself. How can you be – how uh, can you – what is the value that's different that you're bringing from, from other people? And another thing I just want to mention here is that, you know, there is a one right way to be, and I know sometimes, especially as, as women, sometimes, you know, in this world where we are surrounded by very strong personalities of, of all types, we um, think that we have to either be one very certain way to be uh, successful, that we have to follow um, – a model that is that that is very much in a box, and that is that isn't what we're saying. There there are certain things, of course, that we need to do to be professional, to uh, always to be professional, and um, and to be consistent. But we are influenced every day by amazing people in our lives, and those amazing people can be anybody. They can be our grandmother. They can be a colleague at work. They can be a mentor. They can be a sponsor. And, and actually, let's talk about what's the difference between sponsor and mentor. Uh, a mentor is someone that will, can help you and teach you how to be better at what you're trying to do. And it's important to find your, a mentor. We have a whole another uh, one of our uh, ten impactful areas talking about that. But a sponsor goes beyond being a mentor. A sponsor is someone who's in a very good position who actually takes it upon themselves to help uh, promote you or your business and, and move you along. A sponsor is someone who's going to invite you to be part of a, of a board of directors. And that can be part of the things that you do in the next uh, month as you're, as you're looking at. Identify different organizations outside of your work that you might want, that you could belong to, whether it's a chamber of commerce or a nonprofit, that helps promote what your personal brand is. Is there anything out there, Liz? Liz? Did I lose people? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Um, one was uh, to go back and review mistakes made in the past, um, check and admit what was actually done wrong and learn, and uh, really learn from it to avoid making the same mistakes because sometimes that's a little scary, which I thought was a yeah. pretty powerful thing to do. You know, uh, my my doctor, who I mentioned before, he had a saying that said, <clears throat> there are no mistakes, there are only missed opportunities. And really, it's good to go back and review, but don't hit yourself over the head. Really see it as a learning experience, as, as you have said. And, you know, um, as we're looking at the amazing people that affect our lives every day, um, you know, be grateful to them for their inspiration. Thank them for the inspiration while they're still around for you to do that and embrace what they have to offer and take all the things that they have brought together to make it um, so that you can make yourself be uniquely yours. And I'm going to go, uh, tell you a little bit about the amazing people that have been in my life that have shaped me and some of the lessons that, that I've learned um, from them. The first here is Bob Gray. He taught me to believe in myself so that others will believe in you. And he was a truly amazing person. He, in the 80s, really started the personal branding, and what he did was um, behind the scenes help uh, the, the image of, of leaders, presidents from around the world, and I had the amazing luck to get to know him and have him teach me uh, some of the best practices of personal branding that there is. Okay, so here's me with my grandfather. What did he teach? To make a statement with your presence, you can see he was a very dapper man, and it's very important to, you know, always look your best and, and make a good presence. Oh, here's my, uh, my, my father who taught me to work very, very hard, but he loved to party, as you can see. So if you work hard, you can party hard. Uh, this was my, my army who, um, uh, taught me a lot of things, a lot of those things, like don't uh, stand between the dog and the lamppost. Those were all his things. We used to call them arnieism. But the biggest thing about him was that it's important that we make a living out of what we get, but we make a life out of what we did. So too, um, too much is given, much is expected. Here we are in Mexico with the little first school that we built. I might go low there. Okay, so this was my friend Charlie, and he always said, don't take yourself too seriously, because life is short, and make it fun, and it was short for him. Okay, so the final one thing, you know, here's my grandmother, and, um, you know, as a woman, you don't have to be like a man to be, you know, very, you know, impactful. You can be a woman in the way that you do it, and you, you, you embrace that you are a woman and you take that and you make it work for you. So you can see here she was actually the first beauty queen in Colombia. And on the right, okay, believe it or not, she was in her late 80s on um, the thing on the right and she was asked to go back and crown um, the, the queen, the latest queen. And she wrote at the bottom, oh, uh, I'm my way to crown the new queen. Don't I look good? Yes, she did. So here she is at 103. And so um, what the point is is don't think about what is. Think about what you could make it be and embrace everything that you learn from all those amazing people that are around you to be the most that you um, can be. And, um, and don't be afraid. I mean, just go forward. Don't put limits on yourself. It's really you can take it to whatever level that, that you can be. As um, my uh, friend uh, Bob Gray told, used to tell me, if you believe in yourself, other people will believe in you. And with that, I think we have like four minutes. If there's any questions, or Liz, if you want to say anything, um, that's pretty much is my contact information if you want to reach out to me. Great. Well, Anna, I think that's great. Um, while I wait for maybe some questions to come in, um, I just wanted to touch back on the, um, you know, Googling yourself. Like, once you Google your own name, um, let's say you're not happy about the results or you don't 
you are not the first person. There's other, you know, Liz Whiteheads that come up before me. Um, what are some of the things I can do to affect that? I know it's a longer webinar, but maybe you could just touch on a few things. Yeah, um, well, um, there's some things that you can do uh, yourself. If you know that in the past you've had uh, some things that come up and they've gone missing, you can search for them. And, you know, between you and some of your friends, you can keep going back and linking on them, and that will help them come back up. There's other tricks to help things come back up to the to forward a, a little bit. Um, also, another way to do that is, and in everything that you do, like um, if you're doing an event, you can put out press releases or even you can attach to your own website, um, you know, uh, pictures of an event that you did or things and, and you can, um, and Google and Yahoo and the others have systems where you can put in keywords so that they will uh, come up to the top. Another thing you should know that's coming up with Google is that, um, and you can actually check your, your website on there to see if, if you're going to fit their new, um, their new parameters. They're going to be checking all websites, and if your website is not smartphone or um, compatible, then they're not going to put you up on top. So there are some things, lots of things that you can be doing to make sure that you uh, can continue to be up on top. But one of the main things is to be continually active. And even yourself, keep going back to your things and, 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 and linking on them because they stay to the top depending on, on how often people link them. Good to know. Um, well, there aren't any other questions, and I think we've we've taken it right down to um, the end. But Anna, I want to thank you so much for your professional experience and the personal experience that you shared. Uh, I think everyone on the call uh, probably got a little something out of it, if not a lot out of it. And um, and I look forward to uh, maybe a, maybe a follow up later this year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. And yes, um, I will be sending out the recording for this and uh, material, so you can stay tuned for that. Thanks so much.